guys, let me turn this one off. See you guys later. Hold on. Woo! There we are. That better? All right, let me turn this off. All right, all right. Is that a normal beard or a COVID beard? Oh, this is a normal beard, man. I mean, it's gotten bigger. Um, I mean, hadn't cut it in a while, but I just keep it lined up on the bottom, kind of lined on the top, you know. Okay. But uh, looking good, my... looking good. <laughs> I appreciate well, it. Appreciate it. No, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for allowing us to give you your flowers and for Black History Month. Absolutely. Now you Thank may not you. know. All... You may not know. Um, people were asking about you. Yep. A so that's how you got curated. Every, you know, when we put it out there in the beginning of the month, because we didn't even know we were doing this. Nope. And what happened was in the beginning of the month, we said, you know what? Let's interview black photographers for Black History Month. So Dallas threw it out there. He's like, oh, we're going to do a photographer every day. And I was like, what? I said, we're going to do a black <laughs> photographer every <laughs> single day. And I said, what about every other day? He was and like, I said, no, we're not, we're not half black. We're full black. So he was like, every single day, except for the, you know, the weekends. Yeah, weekends, of course. We need to get some uh, rest. <laughs> And so afterwards, we put it out there. We said, who do, who needs to be interviewed? Who we want to give their flowers to? And your name popped Came up, up repeatedly. So oh, they said D'Artagnan. And he goes, who? I say who. You I said D'Artagnan. He says, from Three Musketeers? <laughs> no, no, I said, no, no not that D'Artagnan. <laughs> the black D'Artagnan. <laughs> no, that's how it came about. So Bro. You know, we're, we're clowns. So just let you know we're clowns. Yeah, so they, they, they definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have, you have yeah, fans. Requested. You have fans. Yes, and, and you've done For some sure. amazing work. And yes. we want to hear all about it. How did you get started? What was your inspiration? And who the hell is D'Artagnan? Yeah, like, what's up? That's what it's about. So let's start from... Where are you from, D'Artagnan? Give us your origin story. I am from a small town in Mississippi called Itabina. Oh! He's home. home. Oh, we got a bat going on. <laughs> he's, oh, he's from Louisiana. You said Louisiana. I said, no, Mississippi. So you buy the, Fr the French name, bro. That's probably what it is. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you but, off. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was saying the French name probably throws. I, I mean, I had a lot of people to ask if I was from Louisiana or if my people were from Haiti or, you know, something like that because of the French name. So, but no, I'm from Mississippi. Um, okay. I'm uh, currently located outside of the capital uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. So. Nice. So how does all this artistry come from Mississippi? Yeah, where did it come like, from? Where's the influences coming from? Um, good question. So, I would attribute it to, um, I guess, my upbringing. Um, as a kid, my dad and I would uh, would draw a lot. You know, uh, you us drawing uh, like the big pirate ship with the mast and stuff like that. You know, you were really done. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We watch bucklers, all of that kind of stuff. You know, so uh, I grew up drawing that kind of stuff, drawing horses. I mean, we had a uh, collection of encyclopedia. Um, they were world book encyclopedias. And so uh, in a small Delta town, you know, when I'm bored, just go in there and grab an encyclopedia, you know, uh, find some Excuse me, do you know what an encyclopedia is? Absolutely. Had um, a whole shitload of just, them. Just making sure, because you young kids don't be knowing. <laughs> that was the internet before the internet. Yes, it Continue, was. sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember, you know, grabbing the H's and just whatever I was interested in and you know, finding a picture of a horse or whatever, you know, just drawing things. And so um, from there, I would say maybe my seventh grade year in um, middle school, um, I was enrolled in a gifted arts program. And <clears throat> I was in that program throughout uh, my high school years. And so in that class, you know, we painted, we drew, we threw pots, we sculpted, uh, you name it, we did it. Uh, I mean, it was wonderful. We had this really uh, awesome teacher named Donald Parker who, because we didn't, you got to understand, the Mississippi Delta is like dirt poor, you know, and um, so we didn't have a lot of resources. And so for things like uh, pottery, Mr. Parker would actually go to the hills and dig up mud and come back and wow. actually, yeah, put that in vats and stuff and let it, you know, uh, marinate or whatever it needs to do. And we would strain it and we would make our own clay, you know. Yep. So, um, yeah, so I had a really fine art background coming out of high school. You, know? you had a amazing <clears throat> teacher. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I there's mean, so many programs, there's so many school programs that are losing art 
And it's sad mm -hmm. that you had a teacher go out into the fields and said, you know what, I have to bring this back. So we get the clay. Yep. Thank God for yep. your teacher. Need yep. the clay. He did. So that. how did you go from sculpting and drawing horses and things? And to how did they go to photography? Um, so long story short, I go to school um, at Mississippi Valley State University and I major in fine art uh, with an emphasis in vis viscom. So the only thing I want to do is be a, a, a graphic designer. I want to be the best designer possible, you know. Uh, matter of fact, that's what I do in a day. I'm a full-time art director at an advertising agency. Um, <clears throat> and so photography creeps in because while working at the university, there were times when we, I worked in university communications. So there were times when we would have to grab the camera to go take pictures of, you know, the president and different dignitaries visiting the campus. Never knew how to use the camera. Uh, actually, in college, I took photography, but I hated it, you know. Uh, you said you hated it? We... Yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't my because I, I couldn't see photographer. I promise you, I couldn't. I mean, like, I took it when we were shooting film and loading our film in the boat loader, you know, and um, you know, going in the dark room. We only had a black and white projector, you know. So I go back, so I know how to do that kind of stuff, you know. But uh, that professor and I didn't see eye to eye, you know. Okay. And now that I'm older. It's kind of like the Mr. Miyagi, Daniel son effect. I okay. see it and it teach me, you know. It just wasn't going as fast as I wanted it to go, you know. Um, but, so, um, you know, like I said, I would have to take pictures at work. And finally, I decided, you know, I'm going to take this camera home and just you, try to use it on the weekend. Um, got it home. Still wouldn't take it out the bag because I was afraid I would break it and be responsible for it. And one, one year for my birthday, my wife, because I'm cheap. One year for my birthday, my wife bought me a camera. She bought me a Canon 60D. Thank and you, wife. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that, and I got the Nifty 50 for 100 bucks, and that began my photography stuff. You know, like, I began shooting my wife and kids, and I would shoot um, at church programs and things like that, and then I got into sports. And so I would go to the local high school games and camp out under the um, – on the backboard and just do basketball, you know. And um, from there, you know, I moved to the city and things just take off, you know. Um, so I just find new people to shoot. Mm -hmm. I start loving what I'm doing, you know, and um, this became a passion that I couldn't put down, you know. And so here I am now. So nice. here you are now. Nice. It's a little bit more than here you are now because you're an award-winning yeah. portrait photographer. Yep. Let's talk about these Thank awards, shall we? <laughs> so um i I'm, I'm in the uh i follow sue bryce and her portrait masters program mm -hmm. and last year it actually was my first time i've been in that program for a while but never entered it uh just re didn't really feel i had <clears throat> the work to enter and if i back up actually that's kind of how i got in photography also i didn't feel like i didn't feel like my design was artwork even though I know it is, you know. And so my fine art background always led me to want something to be able to show in museums and things like that, you know. And I, I mean, putting a brochure in that just wouldn't work, you know, because, you know, like my, <laughs> my, um, the college that I graduated from, every year they would have these um, alumni shows for homecoming, you know. And I always felt like I had nothing to put, you know. And so photography led me to, be able to create, create stuff that I like, that I can put in, in, in competitions and museums like that. But um, yeah, going back to that, um, the Sue Bryce thing. So I entered the contest last year. I think I entered, um, I think I entered five pieces and four of them placed. Uh, so I got two. Must be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, like me, this is a, international uh competition with um artists from around the world you know and so i'm honored that those even placed you know um and i think i got two silvers and two bronzes you know okay. and so yeah so uh, i just entered the other day i entered uh five pieces and you know to me the hardest thing about that the images are like your children it's like which one do which you? child is important. yeah yeah and I'm sure I, I know I left some good stuff out there, you know, on the on the uh, cutting room floor that probably should have entered versus the stuff I entered. So, 
fingers crossed, we'll see how we do this year, you know. We're going to think you're going to do good. Yeah. So how did you come up with your style? Because out of all the people we interviewed thus far, you have the most painterly style of photography. It's very, you have a signature style. How did you evolve to that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think I think that has a lot to do. Well, I mean, so if I back up again, my design stuff, like before when I was at the university, my university level, um, I would love to do the sports stuff, the sports posters, and you know. Um, the brochures, anything related to football, basketball. You know, I would I actually, sometimes I wouldn't shoot them, but sometimes I would. Uh, so I would shoot those. And my editing style kind of came from that, you know. Uh, so when I got into photography, I kind of knew how to edit a little bit, but not like I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so that painting to look, I would say, is inspired a lot by, like, Andy Leibovitz, you know, um, and – um, you know, people like that. <clears throat> um, you can see it. And, I, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's heavily inspired by her stuff. Even though when I look at it, I don't see her stuff, you know, but I, I can, I know where the inspiration comes from, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I think my natural light shooting plays a big role in it also, you know. Uh, I heard you guys talking about natural light before I came on, you know, but uh, uh, I think that plays a huge role. I think people because uh, a lot of people see it and they say, man, this looks like a painting, you know, and um, it's kind of, I'm kind of mimicking what Rembrandt did and his his light, you know, the way he saw light coming in the window, you know, and so um, most people that I shoot when they're in my studio, they're surprised that I use very little equipment, you know, it's usually me, the camera, a lens, some lenses, and a window, and I'll bring in these big polystyrene boards every now and then to bounce light, you know. Uh, sometimes I'll bring a uh, something black to to uh, cut out light, you know. Uh, but <clears throat> honestly, when I get home, I usually I have enough presets built in now that I can kind of run images through different presets and just see, like in Lightroom, just hover and just see what they look like, you know. And sometimes mm -hmm. I'll say, "Wow, I like that," and so I'll take that and build up on it in Photoshop, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think I overall I think that look comes from my fine art background and the things you know that i used to see taking three years of art history and stuff like that you know so well it's definitely there but the twist is you're producing it on melanin skin yeah yeah so yeah. what is your magic of creating this beautiful painterly effect on melanin skin how did that get married um so i think that goes back to pain i think uh i remember in school you know you're taught that um, skin is not just one color, you know, skin is oranges and blues and purples and, you know, and so when I'm editing, I'm looking for those colors. I'm going into my sliders and pulling those colors out and pushing them, you know. Um, and yeah, I think it just goes back to my painting background, you know, even though I don't paint, although I want to paint right now, I follow this guy on Instagram who does a lot of watercolor and I'm like, Man, that's, you know, yeah. and so I, I tell a friend of mine, that um, <clears throat> right now the camera is just a tool. You know, it's always a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, some years from now, I may not even be shooting. I may be painting. I may be uh, throwing throwing pots or sculpting. That's what I really wanted. I really want to sculpt, and I really want to uh, get back into that watercolor. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, back to that skin. I mean, I I, I think it's just uh, like I said, my painting background, and I also you know I intentionally want to make melanated people look the best as they can you know uh that's that's my goal you know um and so if you notice i shoot a lot of dark skinned women you know um and i would yeah <laughs> i would tell people from um uh my grandmother raised me my grandma was a dark skinned black woman you know mm. and um she I remember when I was taking photography in school, I was I would ask her, hey, Grandma, can I take your picture? And she would say, I'm, why? I'm not pretty, you know? And I think that's a Southern thing, you know? Uh, you know, we see a lot of, um, we know, I mean, you guys know, working in the industry, um, the, the blonde hair, blue eyes are, you know, propagated as, you know, the most beautiful, you know? With the light skin and curly hair. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, while we have nothing against that, we do also know that, 
darker women or dark women or, or women of color are beautiful also or just as beautiful, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so as we called you were showcasing their milk duddiness. <laughs> <laughs> you were showing I have, the milk duddiness. I have two daughters and that. I keep themselves in my work. And so uh like I said I'm very intentional about what I put in there and what I you know. I love how you shoot dancers. Like you had a series where you shot, a, I don't know, it's a couple of dancers, not together, but you shot dancers and, and, and there's ways, you, you know, we see the Alvin Ailey dancers when, when they shoot them, yours feel completely different. It feels, it feels very artistic. It feels very, um, it just feels so soft and graceful. And, and, and intimate. It's uh, very intimate, yes. Very intimate. How did you come up with that? Like, or was it just, or like, did a dancer come to you and say, "Please photograph me, D'Artagnan, and photograph me like this"? No. So, <clears throat> I think the first dancer I shot um, was a high school senior. She was her name is Coraline. I, I worked with her mom at uh, Jackson State, and her mom would tell me, you know, about her. And um, she was, you know, uh, classically trained to be a ballet dancer, and so. We got together one afternoon, <clears throat> and again, I was really young in photography, you know, and I photographed her uh, some places around the city. And, you know, after that, I got back home and looked at those, and I loved how graceful they were, you know. I mean, and I've always loved ballet dancers, just uh, just the way they hold their hands, the way their feet, you know, they, they, they arch their feet, and um, just the way they look, you know. And so... Um, I set out to to capture that. Like, that's a love. So, to me, shooting dancer or photographing dancers is like photographing sports. You know, like exactly. It's just a love. Yeah. And so, what I usually do, you guys mentioned it being intimate <clears throat> in my studio when I'm photographing a dancer. It's usually that person and myself, and I kind of just let them do their thing. You know, uh, I sit back in the cut and I just capture them. You know, I'm, I shoot frame after frame. Uh, I know I'm gonna need a new shutter soon, but uh, <laughs> but I, I just I just shoot I shoot and shoot and um, every now and then I will see because I'm a, I'm a portrait photographer by nature and so every now and then I'll see a portrait in there and I'll ask them can you do that for me one more time and I'm gonna move my position because I saw a, I saw a portrait in there you know mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is I um, with them they're such perfectionists that they will, I think I'm tiring them out, but they'll come back and look at my camera and they'll say, my foot is not right. You know, yeah. or- That's what they do. Right. They look at their phone. Yeah. 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 They'll say, let me do that again. Because what happened is another dancer will see that and they'll be like, ooh. Look at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because Day's a dancer. Yeah, you should so see him do his yeah. ballet hands. You no, so Dallas will be like, uh, is that good? <laughs> are, they, are they doing good? I'm like, no, ew. They <laughs> showed him your ballet hands. No. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's not right. It's not proper form, but yeah. So that's old me. <laughs> Don't let this body fool you. Hey, we gotta get that old back in the day. <laughs> oh, you gonna get up and dance? No. What oh. are you talking about? Oh, I thought you were gonna get up and dance. Damn. <laughs> but no, we um. So continue. So the model look at the back of the camera. But yeah, go look at. So they they're 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 hard themselves. You know they. So basically, they come from the same kind of background we come from, where they used to critique. You know, and so mm -hmm. they'll you, they'll look at the image, and I think I'm tiring them out, and they'll say, "No, can I can I do that again?" And I'm like, "Sure," you know. And so, um, you know, we just always come through, come come out with some magic, you know. And uh, they're ecstatic. They look and they say, "Wow, that's me!" Like you know, you captured that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just love that. I'm, my mantra is uh, just keep feeding me, feed me dancers. Like you know, give, give me all the dancers you can, you know. So let me ask you this. You call yourself a portrait photographer. What does portrait photography mean to you? <clears throat> um, that's a good question. So I love faces, you know. Um, I can be at Walmart, I can be at Target, be wherever, and I'm looking at faces, you know. Um, I love the shapes of faces. Um, anybody that shoots with me, well, uh, let me back up. Everyone that is shot with me, a profile shot somewhere in my in my uh, on my computer. You know, I just I always have to get a profile shot, and I think I tell people sometimes I, I think I'm a lazy artist. Uh, I think because I know I can draw these people, 
but photography helps me to capture them faster and do what I need to do and just get it out. You know, um, I, like I said, I've just always been enamored, you know, and what I'm looking at when I photograph people is I'm looking for a level of comfort in their eyes. I'm looking for a level of confidence, you know, in the way they hold their chin and, and you know, things like that. And so, um, I would say that's that's portrait photography for me. Just capturing an image and giving someone back something that makes them um, feel better and makes them smile. You know, brightens their day. So, um, who's inspired you as a portrait photographer? Um, again, Andy, Andy Libowitz. Um, I'm gonna um, ask you why. Why Andy L? You know, that's a good question. Um, I just remember even this is before I got into photography. I remember seeing her stuff and just saying to myself, like, man, this is nice. Like, um, I mean, I even a friend gifted me this. Um, this is her book. Don't um, we have that? I think we have that. we got that. And this one is you got the signed version. Really? Really? That's what we that's what gonna flex? Yeah. Really? Really? It's Sorry. a no flex zone. <laughs> really? Oh no, but no, but you say that do you have the signed one? Because this here is the signed one. This is fine, well, it's an autograph. I'm coming to you. But uh she wouldn't even know, right? <laughs> I find myself looking at this thing often and um uh, again I don't see my work in it. So I'll put it like this. Even as a designer, like before I design things, I find myself uh, online looking for inspiration. And so I'll grab things from different folders. And <clears throat> I mean, not different folders. I'll grab things and throw them in different folders. And then I begin my design process. And I'm not looking at those things per se, but I stored enough info in my head that I know the direction I want to go in. And so I would say the same thing about her stuff. You know, like I don't have this in the studio with me, you know, but um, I've seen enough of this to know uh, what's good and what's not. And it's not all based on her. You know, um, a lot of my stuff, um, like I love Bryce Chat. you know. Uh, Bryce is a photographer from North Carolina. He's a brother. I mean, his stuff is phenomenal. It really um, is. It is. My work and his work look nothing alike, but nothing I'm alike. inspired by it. Yeah, I'm so inspired. Like when I see it, uh, I'm just inspired. You know, um, I love you guys' work. Like uh, Dallas, your your black and white stuff. You know, like um, this is before I even knew you. Like I see, I was seeing it. Like man, that's nice. And I was, I was like, I'll never be able to like. It. You know, <laughs> I mean, um, and I'll never be able to shoot a dancer like that. So now. I can oh, help you. Now even. I can help you. If you give me that book, <laughs> I will help you. You give me that book, and I'll give you light as light, and we're even. See, I. That's a good. That's we're a good. We're that's a good. Sounds like even exchange. But, but uh, even to be, I love but even to be putting a sentence with Bryce and any L, I'm flattered. So thank you very much, because yeah. yeah, they're both amazing no artists. And those are, I mean, man, if I would show you guys the, I have folders on my computer called Instagram. And all of you guys is working, you know, like seriously. I grab that again, day seriously, yeah, I, do too. seriously, like, thing. dude. I'm talking about like, and sometimes I forget to put them in the folder, and so my desktop is just peppered with images, like stacked on top of each other because I see stuff and I'm like, oh man, it's nice. And sometimes I never go back to it, but it's just I have to have that, you know. So and, what um, captures your eye that would make you say, I'm going to grab the picture? So yeah, what, what is it? What What's is it that thing? captures you? Uh, I like energy. You know, I like, um, I'm not a big color person. Like, my stuff is usually not, like, popping with color, you know, but I like energy. I like, um, I like things that are, that are tasteful, things that are artful, you know, and um, things that are refined, you know. I mean, um things that where I know that 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 photographer took special time to get that image right you know um like I'll see some stuff and I'm like man why he clean why didn't he clean the lint off that person you know and it's like uh, this uh, is <laughs> that the, sometimes the perfectionist like, that's the perfectionist in you yeah little things like that make or break a picture you know um and so um yeah I just see things and I see things that like that that excite me and I have to have it and every now and then 
I'm searching for something, I run across an image. I was like, wow, I didn't know I had that. You know, because I grabbed it. Like I said, never And you realize you it. got yeah. it again. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, several of those, but yeah. Uh, you asked me who inspires me. I'm also inspired by Platon. Uh, like, I love his work. I mean, um, there are several people I photographed in my studio that I try to mimic that style. Um, the wide angle is close the up. Yeah, yeah. I would say he's probably the only photographer style that I try to mimic on purpose. Like, mm -hmm. I love the way that looks. Like, I um I have a I think it's a twenty four millimeter lens, and uh, I'll just like the other night I shot this girl. She's the um, top rated female gamer in the country. And she's black, and she's from here in uh, Mississippi. And so she came to me for some uh, headshots because um, Twitch is going to put her on a billboard in Times Square. Nice. And so, yeah, yeah. And Good so for you, she man. Came Congratulations. To me. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So she came to me for that, and I told her I was like, I did what she wanted, but I was like, I saw these, she had these tattoos on her on her forearms, you know, and I was like, I gotta get a shot like this, and I showed her the the platon stuff, and so we just backed up to the white paper, and I had the light on the light over my head, and shot it black and white, and it was so powerful. She was like, her her response was to this because she had seen the other photos, but for this she was like, oh, I love that, you know. And she was like, I got to have that. And so, you know, that goes to me. I'll give people what they come to me for, but sometimes I'm inspired by something else. And I'm like, okay, let me play now, you know? Yeah. And so, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. yes That's yes. what we do all the time. We we take mm -hmm. care of you, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then we take care of us. Even when we have, like, even when we got, like, clients, like, big clients, they'd be like, all right, I see you want us to do this. Can, can I? Can you give us a 10 minutes and let me try and something? usually, good nine times out of 10, they pick out photos. Always. They were like, okay, always, always, always online. That's the one. Yeah. I know I said I wanted this, but that right there, that's it. They will be uh -huh. like, yes, and, th and then the magic anything. is we charge them more. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so you give them the invoice and they go, why is this invoice higher than what you said? Because you took all photos. Mm -hmm. So there you have yeah. it. <laughs> it's all about the business. Um, exactly. I'm happy about your trajectory. I'm happy where you're going because who would have thought the little the little black boy in Mississippi would have a possible billboard in Times Square? Two places most photographers want to be. Yep. In Vogue mm -hmm. and on 42nd Street yep. in New York to have your stuff out That's there because we've had stuff out there and it's mm -hmm. it's magical. You know, yeah, to have your friends yeah. take a photograph and say, yep, we saw your photo out there. Yep. I was like, wow. Yep. So let's talk yes. about that. Um, but he has something similar. When you had the photos around town, those really enlarged portraits mm -hmm. that were around town, am I crazy? When I had them, yeah, it was. It was. It, I'm not. I can't. I can't. I'm not forgetting. It was. They did prints of your work. Hold that thought. Hold no, that thought. that's Bryce. That was Bryce. Oh fuck. Don't yeah, that me. was Bryce. We'll cut that. No, out. no, no. We'll cut, that's not going. In here. <laughs> we'll cut that. That's out. not going in here. No problem. Yeah, that was Bryce. I'm, Shane, do you want to send the corner? Shane, do you want to send the corner? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn yeah. around. Hey, it's coming, day. It's coming. So we we can put it back. <laughs> but in. but it's not bad to be like compared to Bryce. So that's no, no doubt. no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Don't no, be Because I, I didn't know what you're talking about. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, do you have photos? I was around town. And he went, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Shane, let's talk about your family. Do they support what you do? What you do? They do. They do. Um, my wife puts up with me because I, I basically go to my studio every Sunday morning, uh, and I'm either it's either a client session or a creative session, and that's how I just get my what's in my head out you know um and so um i try not to I try not to work too much during the week you know but they know sunday morning is like from sunday to about three is my time you know so um, you only shoot one day a week correct correct every that's now wow and yeah. but you know that's your day on, so. the, on the holy day that's my day we go to church yeah. this is god day we go to church yeah Nice. I, so um, you tell me that if I called you on a Tuesday and said, can I get a photo shoot on Thursday, I can't book you? Well, let me back up. So what I was saying, 
what, what I say is so people who want studio type work like uh strobes like what the girl wanted for the twitch like mm -hmm. they can get that during the week you know uh but it's even then i mean i'm it's rare that i shoot during the week you know uh most people in the area know he's only shooting on sundays you know and so they call and they know hey there are four sundays in a month i need one of them, you know and so um so that i just completely booked for the year yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, so uh, people know, most people know who know me know that those are the only days I'm shooting. Like I said, unless they're wanting some studio type work. Like, I, I, um, there's a friend of mine who is a, he's a custom suit maker, and um, he does a wonderful job. You'll see him on my page. His name is Kyrus Brown. And so he came to me last Friday, Friday night, and we photographed a new suit that he, he created, you know, and um I'll be honest, sometimes stepping out outside of my comfort zone of Sundays uh, allows me to learn because then I'm not shooting with natural light. I'm shooting with strobes, you know, and it's usually then uh, my AD200 and my soft lighter, you know, and I usually that use soft one lighter. lighter. Yeah, soft lighter, is a, it, that's it. That's a beast, you know. I have a question uh, for you. How did you come across yep. the soft lighter? So that was inspired by Felix Coons. Really? Um, we any, 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 any well, that but I think he used to work for her. So um, oh. I would I would look at her behind the scenes stuff, and I would say to myself, "Man, what is that?" You know, yeah, and <laughs> we paused. And I didn't know. You know, we paused the screen and got up in and said, "Okay, like, what's what's that? What is that?" Like a pee. Oh, that's what. <laughs> oh, that's what we're gonna get. We go look it up and say, "Oh, we got yeah. it. We found it." Yeah. 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 I would uh, look at her stuff. I would, I mean, man, I was looking at all the behind the scenes stuff I can find. I would say, man, what is that diffuser? Because most photographers would only talk about the Octobox and the, um, the um, uh, what's the other box? The square uh, one. Beauty Dish the, uh, or whatever, right? The soft box. Is, people were crazy about the Beauty Dish. And um, I found out, so I saw, I would see the background. I mean, I see the, the behind the scenes of her stuff. And then when I was in the Sue Bryce group, well, no, I was in the Felix group. And I would look at his stuff. This is before he started his videos. And mm -hmm. so people would ask, hey, what is that? And he would tell them a soft lighter, you know. And so I ordered my first one. And, man, I used that thing. And I was like, wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful light. Like, even the science of how that light comes out, you know. And so I began to feather that thing, you know, uh, you know, in that, you get this beautiful side light that comes out. And, um, yeah, that's my that's my go-to, that soft light. We have maybe three or four of them. We even keep one in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so no matter what, uh -huh. we always have a soft lighter. Because one time I left it home. Let me tell you my secret. We had a photo shoot. Uh, we had a photo shoot for um, Loretta Houston yeah. for her birthday. Uh -huh. and, and this is what made us leave one in the car now. So I went to do something. We're in the house. And my hands were full. I put, I had the soft light. I put it down to pick up something else. So when I no left the house, I had things in my hand. We go to the car, and we get to the beach because she wanted to shoot on the beach. And we had no, no soft lighter. We had no modifiers. No modifiers no whatsoever. Nothing. Oh wow! And we stood there like, oh my god. So, I'm like, well, we gonna wear bare. Look, she gonna be bare bub. We gonna just make it happen. <laughs> and know? I was like, no, no, bro. This is light as light. We gonna uh -huh. find something in this car. And we found a COVID mask. We would have turned that shit out with bare bub. It's like the sunlight. We had, look, we would have used chip. We would have used the sun. Or we used a t-shirt. Right. Like at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I found a COVID mask in the glove compartment. And, and my shirt was black. He was like, oh, no. And he so didn't they, have on a white shirt. Nothing. So we only had COVID mask. COVID mask in the pro photo. That COVID mask like, did the damn thing. So yeah. as we say, light is light. But no, the soft lighter is an amazing tool. For anybody it else, is. you want to produce beautiful soft light. Absolutely. So yeah, so so now we know at least what's in your arsenal. So let me ask you a question. Um, are you so are you more of a proponent of natural light and sunlight before you go to strobe? I am, but what I've started to do a lot recently is um, marry the two. <clears throat> so. A lot of times I'm shooting like my dancers. Because what I would notice is I would get home and some of the images wouldn't be as not 
art, but they wouldn't be as great as they could be. You know, and I remember one time shooting a dancer and I set my um, soft lighter up. <clears throat> and so I was marrying uh, these two lights. And I looked at it in the back of my camera. I didn't like what I saw. Mm -hmm. But when I got home, and so I, I turned it off. And when I got, but when I got home and I started coloring those images, I looked at that image and I said, oh, wow, that is really nice. You know, and so it told me then, don't trust what you see on the back of the camera. Right now. Uh, know, right never. Now. never. never. Yeah, yeah. And so what I started doing, if you see those images on my IG of the young lady with the braids, the dancer, yeah, those are I'm I'm marrying <clears throat> that's natural light and that soft lighter. And wow. when I got that home, I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is beautiful, you know. And uh, you learn a lot with both because even with that, what I did was I put up one of those big polystyrene boards on the side, so it made a wall. And mm -hmm. so when she would dance, it was almost like she was dancing in a box. And that light was just creeping in just a little bit, just enough to you know, carve her out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, learned a, I learned a lot. And so that's why I shoot like that. You know, I shoot so often because I'm always learning, you know. Um, but, yeah, um, I, <clears throat> for the longest, it was natural light only because that's all I had, you know. And I, um when I got in my studio, I shared with another guy. He was using that studio as mostly a um, screen printing studio. Okay. He was a photographer also, but he would shoot on, you know, with the strobes every now and then. So I asked him, you know, uh, hey, bro, can I can I use this studio? And he was like, yeah. So basically, I was trading designs for T-shirts, you know, for time in the studio. And so he eventually got me on the lease because – that natural light that was coming in that window was just beautiful. You know, it's like, man, this is gorgeous. And nobody else in the city was using natural light. You know, everybody was strobing it out with the beauty dishes and everybody's stuff looked the same, you know. But I, <clears throat> you know, Sue Bryce would always talk about, you know, if you give me a corner and a window, I can make a, a million bucks, you know. And mm -hmm. pretty much all I need is just give me that corner and that window and I'm good. And so, um, I've made a lot of different looks in that one corner, you know, and um, I mean, I get out of it sometimes because sometimes I look at it and I say, man, this look, all looks the same, you know, um, but I know it doesn't look the same, but I, I, I know to myself, I say to myself, I can push myself farther, you know, and so, you know, you're going to start to see me say do more environmental stuff and just get out of the studio, just do other things, you know. Mm hmm. I think I think I'm looking forward to that. Um, I I don't think it's the same. I, I look at artists like we have chapters, so I so I had a chapter of doing a whole bunch of graphic shit. That was it. That was that chapter. I had a chapter of doing yeah. commercial beauty. That was it. I have a chapter of doing creative uh, mixing. What two lights with my main and fill and doing fashion work. So it's just chapters. Don't look at it like uh, you're doing the same thing. Look at it like it's just chapters in your life. So when we read the book of D'Artagnan, it'll have mm -hmm. all the different chapters, all the era of this or the era. That's that's all that it is. I um, agree. You know, if you, if I send, I'm gonna send you guys a link to my 500 pick site, and so that's the site that I would use. That's the portfolio I used before I had a studio. And well, so, let me ask you a question. Can we all wait? Can we all see this 500 pics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so type, type it in the comments. Yeah. So we can all see it. But go on. Let me cut you off. So basically, it's uh, it's my work before I had a studio, and okay. it's mostly um, mostly outside stuff. I mean, I think it still it still uh, holds up, but um, you just get a chance, like they say, you get a chance to see the another chapter. You know. Yeah. Uh, let me let me go there now copy and put it in there please do I been here. yeah this is uh all right let me copy this let's see like the face from my mac all right i just dropped it thank oh. you very very much there it is everybody oh. you want to check it out so go on we're gonna cut you off no, I was just saying, so, I mean, Dave's right. Um, like, some of the early stuff you see in here is me in the studio. And this is before I started using the natural light, uh, a lot of this. Uh, this is strobed out with the soft lighter. But then you see all the street stuff that I was doing, you know. Um, and so this is this is all I had. I didn't have a studio. And so, you know, get with different people, and we just go find a spot and make it work, you know. So are you a make-it-work kind of dude? I am. I am. Um, 
I come from an HBCU, man. We we learn to get it done without much. And so, uh, yeah, you make it happen. Like, uh, most of this stuff you see in here, um, but at one point, the only thing I had was that 50 millimeter. And so I didn't have an 85. I didn't have a 35. It was just that $100, 50. And so I made it work, you know, until – I got to a point to where you could get something else. You know, it was a while before I got an 85. Man. So let's talk about this stuff. When you mm -hmm. were 15 years old, did you see yourself where you are today? No, when I was 15, um, I just knew I could draw. I knew I could paint. I was that artsy kid in the neighborhood. You know, uh, I didn't know anything about design. Uh, actually, that was a time in my life where I thought I wanted to be an animator and, uh, you know, work at Disney or something like that. Um, but no, I I definitely didn't think I would be a part of it. I knew nothing about graphic design. But I did know there were things that would catch my eye, you know, like when I would go to the city and, you know, see different billboards and stuff like that, you know, like advertising things would grab my eye. I remember, um, <clears throat> you know, we were in the clubhouse one night and people were talking about Vibe magazine and stuff like that. And I remember kid buying those magazines saying to myself man this is nice like this is i didn't know what it was called you know i just knew the images I, that i saw were really nice i remember this one image that sticks out to me was um by did this spread on fat joe and they must have shot that with a hundred millimeter um because they were so close you could see the whiskers coming out of his out of his uh mustache uh -huh. you know <laughs> i remember I'm looking like at that and thinking man. Say, that, say it again He's, he's looking it up right now. Uh, every time I look over, I okay. see that you. Every time you say he's it. looking it up, yeah, like ooh. Okay, okay, okay. But I remember thinking to myself, like, man, I want to do that. I don't, I don't know what that's called, you know, but I want to do that. And so, uh, leaving high school, my art teacher gave me a book called Jobs in Art, and in that book, I saw a job called Graphic Designer, and I knew I loved computers. Um, and so uh, I was like, well, that's what I'm going to major in, you know. And so I go to MVSU, and I get there. And like I said, this is a small uh, HBCU, one of the youngest HBCUs. It was founded in 1950. And so I get there, and um, the computers we have are old. Like, they're the old 6600 Max, you know, like oh, yeah. uh, none of them are. Yeah, yeah, the old Manila color, you know. Computers exactly, with the little square screen. Yeah, exactly. And so um, that was that was it. And so from there, um, I would say a big inspiration of mine was, um, so there was a professor who had graduated, went back and, and gone off and came back uh, to teach. And his name was Jerry Redman. And Jerry was the first man that looks like me that I saw making money as an artist. Uh, he was a graphic designer, you know. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um so he inspired me a lot. Just to, um, I remember one thing he said to us one time. He was like, the difference between a uh, a non-pro and a pro is the pro gets paid, you know? And In simple terms, so, yeah. Yeah, it's simple. It's simple terms, yeah. And that resonated with me, you know? He was like, just because you're a student doesn't mean you can't be a pro right now. You know, if you're getting paid for your work, you know, I mean, you're a pro. And so uh, yeah. I took that month. It always kind of stayed with me. But uh, but no, that's your question. At fifteen, no, I didn't. I didn't. Actually, I probably saw myself still in Itabina. I think maybe, <laughs> you know. But uh, <laughs> but no, definitely not talking to people in California. <laughs> wow. So let me ask you this: Where do uh -huh. you see your work going? So, like, of course, we do commercial fashion beauty work. So we want to see our stuff in magazines. We want to see our stuff in campaigns. Where do you see a D'Artagnan portrait print being? So I, I want my stuff in museums. Um, I want, um, I, I am, so I kind of dabble in commercial photography in my job. Um, mm -hmm. I shoot sometimes for one of our clients uh, out in California. Um, I guess I can say it's fine. They call Heston. They make these big. So you're rank completely disrespectful. So you need. So <laughs> first you disrespected us on the Annie L signature, and now we're in California. If you ever need a California person, we're here. And you're like, nah, I got it. Mine. mine. Yeah, mine. I'm the portrait photographer that's going to shoot commercial work. So thanks. I'm, thanks. Good looking out. You know, I'm still looking for this Fat Joe cover, right? Good looking out. But continue. Thanks. But um. 
so I, I do some commercial work, and I used to say I wanted to be a commercial photographer, and I guess in a way I kind of still do, but for the most part, um, I want to, I would like to have traveling exhibits, you know, um, just have my stuff in um, in museums. Uh, I would like to, people keep asking me for the coffee table book, you know, and, you know, I would like to do that one day. I mean, I know. I love looking at books, you know, uh, like I have the Annie book. I, I have, I was looking at this book, a friend of mine gave me back in, uh, in college. This was, uh, you guys remember this Michael Jordan book this uh, for the love of the game. Yep. For the love. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, this actually was another book that inspired me greatly. I mean, I remember receiving this and it was, it was just huge and oversized. And so, this was a marrying of typography and photography, you know, and just looking at this, I was like, Oh wow. Like I couldn't figure out if I wanted to take the picture or design the book. You or know? Design the so, book right. so you said, fuck yeah. it. I'll do both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, so, um, and you know, honestly, I think it's things like that that have kind of poured into my life over the years. You know, like I grabbed this book yesterday. Um, my, yesterday was Michael Jordan's birthday, and I remember I was like, I got this book. So I went and grabbed it, and uh, just started thumbing through it. And I, I, I had this epiphany that you know it was things like this over the years that kind of poured into my life and kind of led to me, led me work to where I am now, you know. And so, um, you know, to answer your question, Dallas, I don't know. I think the sky's the limit. I won't limit myself, you know. Um, I've been asked a few times by people, you know, hey, can you come? Actually, uh, there was a girl, she wanted me to come to Cali and shoot her mom, you know. Uh, I've been asked to uh, come to different places, you know, to photograph people. And so, uh, who knows, maybe one day I am a traveling portrait photographer, you know, uh, that's commissioned to go out and, you know, uh, create what I create on, on, on site and on location, you know. But um, I won't limit myself, you know, just whatever the future holds, you know, I'll embrace it. So let's ask you this, where do you see your legacy? What is the D'Artagnan yeah, legacy? legacy? If you can explain your legacy. My legacy, when it's all said and done, I want um, I want my kids to be able to be proud of the work I've created and see themselves in it. Um, like I said, I have two daughters and a son. Uh, I want them to be able to look at the people I photograph and see themselves in different stages of life. You know, um, you know, um, there is some. There's there's some sexy work in there, and we we all have that stage. There is some um, some um, you know the the handsome guy work. There's the the beautiful female work. There's um, there's a skateboarder work. There's wherever you just I just want to I want them. I would love to leave a legacy to where they just see themselves and say, "Hey, my dad created," you know. And um, I want to be a working artist in the house for them also, you know. Right. My, like I said, my dad and I used to draw, and so that was the extent of it. I didn't see him doing it for you know much more than that. And so, my kids see me creating all the time, you know. Uh, they see me working on the computer, you know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, they know what I do, you know. Uh, my son says I'm famous, I'm like, son, I'm not famous. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> He's, you're famous to him. So, he's like, you got 6,000 followers on Instagram. I'm like, son, that's believe it, that's nothing, you know. <laughs> but um, I just want to be able to create and leave a because my kids are creatives also, and so leave that legacy for them to be able to say, "Hey, I can make a living creating because my dad did it," you know. And um, so that that's it, you know. Um, I tell people all the time, I don't I don't want to be famous. I would rather go f photograph the famous person, you know. Um, but um, being famous is not for me, you know. Um, I just want to I want to create, you know, get images out. It's amazing. So we always come to this, this, this. Not yet. What? <laughs> you just ruined my intro. Oh, well, you ruined it when you said Bryce. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love doing this with them. I, I love something. it, love it, love it. <laughs> so let, let's, let's, let's ask you this. Um, Are you we, painting your backdrops? I want to know that. Are you doing your custom painting and your backdrops? I am. I am. Beautiful oh, yeah. work, beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. They really are. And what what inspired that? Um, 
Well, I mean, I would see the work of, you know, like, again, some of the, some of Annie's work, some of Felix's work and people like that. And, um, I mean, I knew most of those were all the fan backdrops. Uh, at the time I was like, man, I can't afford that. You know, um, let me figure out how to do this. And so from, some of my first backdrops were actually created using drop cloths from Walmart, you know, um, you know, the, the kind of rough fab, the rough, uh, uh, canvas. And right. so, um, I it was trial and error, you know, watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. And then um, even now, I think there's still trial and errors. I just made one the other night <clears throat> that I used in the shoot. And, you know, looking at it on the floor, I was like, I don't know if I like that. But when I got in the studio and started working with it, I was like, oh, that looks good. You know. <laughs> we and, understand. <laughs> we totally understand. Yeah. We've done a couple yeah. ourselves. We've been like, hmm. Yeah, I got this, hmm. this one. And I was like, I don't know if we did it right. And, and then, then we used it for we had some video. video work. And it was like, ooh. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> because it's all about how the light hits it. Yeah. It is. That's it's exactly about, what it is. That's exactly how it is. We did it. It was like, that yeah. looks too, we, we did it. So that looks too, like, collegiate. Like, we're about to shoot student back, mm -hmm. you know, student photos. Yeah. So we put it away for, like, two or three months. We're like, we're not going to mess with that. Mm -hmm. And then somebody wanted that kind of feel. So we, let's take it to the studio. Like, oh, let's oh, see. Man, right let's see. Right we here. take it to the studio. And it was like, wow. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one that I use for the longest as a um, a floor. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot on it. I would just use it to let people stand on it. And I shot this girl one day. And I was like, let me put this thing on the wall. And so I put it on the wall. And that natural light hit it. And I got home and I was like, oh crap, I've been, we've been stepping on this thing and this is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> it's been on it's the wall. It, it, it does look amazing. It, it really does. Um, you. How are you giving back to the younger photographers out there? Are you teaching? Are you mentoring? I do. Uh, I, I've been asked a lot to mentor and I do it uh unofficially if that if that makes sense so in other words i don't have any mentees under me but when people ask me questions i willingly give them the info i have you know i i, I let them know first that i'm still learning you know uh i don't have it all um but i i give them what information i have you know i i would think i probably have more info on the computer side than i do on the photography side because i haven't been doing it that long but, um, <clears throat> you know, I can tell them, hey, open those shadows up, you know, or, um, you know, don't be so heavy on this. Because, you know, there are times I'll look at my stuff later on. It can be a week from now. And I said, man, why did I post that? That's so heavy, you know. Um, and so you always have to be your biggest, um, your biggest critiquer. You know, you always have to be. I mean, you look at your stuff and just see, like, man, that. It could be a, a liability sometimes, but for the most part, I just want it done right, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have anything else? Because you know my next question. No, no. So for all the gearheads, what's in your bag? Mm -hmm. Um, I have a 5D Mark III. Uh, I have a 6D, the original 6D. Uh, I have the... Uh, a Canon 85 1.8. I have the Sigma Arc 50. The, I'm sorry, Sigma 50 millimeter Arc 1.4. Uh, I have the Sigma 35 Arc 1.4. I think it is. And I have the Canon. I think it's 24 millimeter. Yeah. Uh, one point. One point. Four, I guess it is. Okay. I, I got that lens. Uh, there was this guy he wanted me to photograph his son's senior portraits, and um, he didn't have enough money. And I saw he had some, he had a post up on Facebook Marketplace where he was selling some gear. And so I asked him, um, "Hey, can we barter for that gear?" So it was like that lens, some papers, and backdrop stands, some more stuff. And he was like, "Sure." So he showed up at the studio with it. And so that he was a he used that lens to shoot. Uh, real estate sceneries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so I view that as my platon lens. That's my lens I get real wide with people, you know, nice. stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, that's, um, 
that's that's what's in my bag. And uh, the like I said, the AD two hundred. Yeah. Okay. Like Godox. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So we are we are at the end. We at the end. We, we need to have a, a dope. Um, what would you call it? Thumbnail. thumbnail photo. So get in. So we're gonna pause for three seconds. And then afterwards, you know, we can go back to talking. <laughs> so let's all get ready. Let's make sure the dog treats not in the shot. I know, right? You ready? We're gonna count to three. You ready? Yeah, his model face on. I know. You see the eyes? You see the eyes you yeah. put on? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'm about to throw mine on. Let's get it. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> D'Artagnan, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for allowing us to come into your life a little bit. Yes. And thank you for allowing us to give you your flowers. And we're proud of you. Keep doing great work. Keep doing great work. Keep pushing. And if you need a photographer in California, we're here. You know, or or when you come, when you come, come visit. Make sure you let us know that you're out here so we can come in and meet you in person. And you have to make us some cornbread. Will do. The cornbread. He's from Mississippi. They gotta have good cornbread. So everybody from Mississippi make cornbread. Does any cornbread is sweet? Cornbread, uh, cornbread, uh, mustard greens and sweet tea. I got you. I got you, Dallas. It's crazy. I got you. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's crazy. But you Thank have you a Dallas. wonderful day, and have a good shoot on Sunday. Thank you, man. Y'all take care. Have you a good too. day. Bye. Bye.